So we're inside our iModel and we want to now start selecting elements. Perhaps we want to turn things on and off. Maybe we want to get information about them. So this is the tool which we use to select elements and it's got a bunch of different modes. So this is a single select. Okay. And with this option on, this means that if I select an element, and then I select another element, it will deselect the previous. If I want to select multiple elements, I could hit the plus here and do that. Or using normal techniques, I can hold the control key down and select multiple elements. So you can see now I've got three elements selected. It tells me down the bottom. You might have also noticed that this tool has flown out and we've now got information. And of course, because I've picked three items, we are seeing um, varying values in certain fields. Some fields may be the same. Um, so for instance, if I was to pick multiple roof events, for instance, let's just uh, select, deselect. This tool, by the way, will clear our selection. So if I now pick multiple uh, vents, multiple roof vents, I would expect some of the things to be the same. Obviously the ID for these are varying, but the sizes are still the same. So again, this will deselect uh, the items that we've got selected. This of course will subtract from that. And this tool here will pick things that I cross with a line. So if I cross these two lampposts, I get two lampposts selected. Again, deselect. And just as a little tip, you can use the right mouse button to drag a line across things as well, and that works just the same. So you will notice when you select things that the tools here will expand. We'll come and talk about these in a future video. But let's say I pick um, this roof panel in here. You'll notice again, these two tools, this tool has been expanded and we've got extra tools that we didn't have before. So what to use of those? And by the way, if you don't want to see this panel, it's in the way you can just click on the eye and it will put it away. The values are still there behind the eye. Well, let's have a quick look at what we can do with these. So this allows us to hide things, i.e. turn them off. Now I could turn off just the individual element like so, so I can now see inside the building. I can clear that selection, that hide, Select it again. And if I wish, I could clear the whole category, hide the whole category. So everything that happens to be on that level will be turned off or category. I should use the word category will be turned off. So you can see that small roof panel on the top of the staircase. Well, here is turned off as well as this one. Now you'll notice because I turned off the whole category, the, 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 the hide button has gone. So I have to go back to that category and turn those back on. Okay. Now it might be that when you do that, it's turned on extra things that you didn't want. Okay. So how do we cope with that? Well, um, uh, let's turn the models off. We can of course go back to a, a, a saved view that we had. So in this case, I came into here in a saved view called, um, uh, building exterior, so I could go and find that. There's buildings exterior and do that. Okay. And of course, if I select something, I can turn off the complete model. Okay, that's so everything on that model. In this case, this was in a model called A1590 architecture. So if I turn that model off, it hides that a complete model. And again, if I want to turn that back on, I'd find that model. That was the 1A15090 architecture and turn it back on. Good. So let's click on the tool, re uh, folds it away. So again, uh, if I want to turn levels uh, or categories on and off, I can do it here. Probably best to be done in the uh, in the visibility tree, but it can be done in here. So what else can we do? Well, let's go and select that roof. Uh, let's turn the models off. That roof is now selected. 
So what I can do, instead of hiding, I can isolate. Now these do exactly the same as what these do, but in opposite. So if I isolate the element, it will just show me that one element. And then of course I can clear that display. And that works again with, um, let's just go and select that again. That will work with categories and models also. Now the last thing we can do on here is, is an isolate, apologies, not an isolate, an emphasize. And what that will do, it'll gray out the whole of our model and show us in emphasis the element that I have selected. Again, that can be very useful sometimes when you're doing that kind of thing. So let's dig deeper into this. Let's clear that display. Let's turn this off because I'm interested in what's inside this building. And let's go and have a look at these beams, these yellow beams. So let's just zoom in slightly and select one. So let's go and have a look at the information we have on this beam. And as we can see, we can see what category. Remember, that's like a layer or a level. And there's lots of other information about this. And depending on how your, um, your eye model is structured, you could do lots of different things. Now, this has got a part definition. It's a structural concrete beam. So if I wanted to find all the structural concrete beams, I could right click on this and say find similar. This will then give me a list in here. I can, as we can see this, uh, there's, there's 10 of them probably. That's, is it 10 or nine? I can't remember. Let's select all of these. Yep, there's 10 of those. And now I could do various things like emphasize, hide, isolate, and so on. So we'll start getting more information about these concrete beams. So that's how we can select, deselect, add to selection, get information, on the elements that we require.